The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. What's going on, everyone? This is End Time Headlines, and it is the 11th of January, and it's a Tuesday, and we welcome you to the broadcast today. If this is your first time joining us, as always, on whatever platform you may be listening or watching from, if there is an if there's an opportunity for you to make a comment below uh, on whatever platform you're watching or listening from, please let us know where you guys are joining us from. And as always, we appreciate you uh, giving us feedback and letting us know that you're this is your first time joining us. And again, where you guys are joining us from. The reason why we do this is because we hope that as you come back, we begin to recognize your names, your faces, your, uh, and we can uh, become more acquainted with you and welcome you. It becomes like a, almost like a family, and we, uh, we appreciate you coming on here today. So we've got an interesting uh, podcast today, uh, and, the, and this, this title alone is going to draw a lot of people in, I know for a fact, on Facebook Live, and it's called Exposing the Modern uh, apostle pyramid scheme. There's a typo in the in the uh, title. I have to go back and edit that after this broadcast. It should say exposing the modern apostle pyramid scheme. Now, what am I talking about? By definition, and by the way, guys, I, there's I'm going to be reading some scripture. I can't pull all these up on the screen because it'd be way too much scripture and it would almost become redundant. So I'll give you the scripture reference to this. You can go back and watch this. Um, or, or follow along with us if you want. But by definition, a pyramid scheme, you've ever heard of a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme? By the definition of a pyramid scheme, uh, by definition is a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever increasing number of investors. The initial promoters recruit investors who in turn recruit more investors and so on and so forth. The scheme is called a pyramid because at each level, the number of investors increases. And I'm going to add a little bit to this. The ones who benefit from these pyramid schemes are, of course, the ones at the top. Now, what am I talking about? Before I get a little bit deeper into that, let me just go straight to the scripture because uh, I believe that if we show you the word of God and we, we reveal to you the truth of this, then when we bring the falsehood of this, it's going to bring more, it's going to bring it more to light. It's going to bring more exposure to this because listen, there may be some folks that are watching this today or listening to this broadcast, either by podcast or by whatever video platform you may be watching, and you may be caught up in this. And unknowingly or unwillingly, or you know someone who is. Now, I speak from personal experience because many, many years ago, I was sucked into this. And I'll give you more details on that in just a minute. But let's get to the scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. Let me say it again, since we're not going to bring that up on the screen. I'll read it again slowly. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 15. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth. I'm going to read this kind of slow because I really want you to listen to what he's saying here. Quote, for I am jealous for you. He's speaking of the church. And by the way, this is, the, this is Paul who is an apostle. He is an apostle. He was appointed as an apostle. He was ordained as an apostle. He was commissioned by as an apostle from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We'll get more into that in just a second as well. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow... As the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, that one paragraph is very important because I believe it serves as a foundation to go from there to what Paul is talking about. So notice he says here that he has a love for the body of Christ. He's jealous over them. 
And he's really speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit in, in, and uh, how be it that he's speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he's talking as Christ, our husband, as in the bride who is us. We are the bride. And he's talking about the love that the bride uh, and the uh, and the husband has for one another. Watch this. And he says, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. So he begins to give an illustration of deception through Satan. And he says, your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Listen to me. Did you know? We get in trouble when we begin to veer away from the word of God. You've heard me talk about this over and over and over again. When we veer from the word of God, that's when we get ourselves in trouble. Listen, there is, uh, and I listen, I, I don't like titles and you know that, but I'm telling you in the charismatic Pentecostal circles, and listen, and before you get mad at me, you would probably consider me charismatic Pentecostal because I believe in the charismata or the gifts, and I believe in uh, Pentecost. Listen, Pentecostal or Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost, Pentecost is one of the seven major feasts of Israel, and it just so happens to be that on the day of Pentecost, is when, or in the season of Pentecost, is when the church was birthed, Acts chapter 2. And because they were, the church or the ecclesia was birthed on the day of Pentecost, and there was, uh, there was the uh, manifestation of the Holy Spirit, many individuals who believe in the charismata or the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they believe in the supernatural of the Holy Spirit, and they believe that the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, they're immediately tagged and labeled as, quote, charismatic Pentecostals or charismatics or Pentecostals. But in the charismatic Pentecostal church, I'm not saying all, but many get into danger because the 66 books of the Old and New Testament is no longer enough. It's no longer suitable for them. So they begin to veer off the word of God and they begin to seek out extra biblical experiences, extra biblical manifestations. And again, there's got to be, I'm not against, hear my heart today. I'm not against the five-fold ministry, Ephesians. The pastor, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, the apostle. I'm not against the fivefold ministry. I'm not against the charismata, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's nine gifts, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm not against the fruits of the Spirit. I'm not against the supernatural of God. I'm not against healing. I'm not against deliverance. I'm not against casting out devils, speaking in tongues, and raising the dead. In fact, I am all about it, and I believe it is for us today. But... Listen to me. Listen to my heart today. Many times the simplicity of the gospel, of the good news, the preaching of the cross is no longer enough for some believers. So they're chasing every and new experience. I'll almost say it again. They begin to chase every and new experience even if it doesn't line up with the word of God. And that, my friend, spells trouble. This is, listen what he says. Your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Listen, for some people, the plan of salvation to repent, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth, Believe on him and confess with your mouth that he died and rose again on the third day and you shall be saved is too simple. And it's not enough. And they, uh, and many want to complicate the gospel because of the simplicity of the gospel. Why do you think the apostle Paul said, 
I am determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. He also said, for it is the power, the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto those that believe or unto those that don't believe. But it is the power of God unto salvation for him that believeth from the, for, to the Jew and to the Gentile both. Now, let me go on to the next paragraph. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. For if he or if, an, if one comes preaching another Jesus whom we've not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel. So again, you guys, many of our veteran followers on podcasts, on YouTube, on whatever, Facebook, you guys have heard me expound and preach and exhort on this many times. But I want to highlight this again. Paul warns there would come a day, and it was even, it, it was happening in his day, and it's going to become more prevalent as we get closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said there would come another Jesus a different spirit, and a different gospel. Listen to what he says. Which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. In other words, he's saying, he's speaking, again, we got to remember who the audience is. He's speaking to the church, and he said, there has come another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel that has infiltrated the church, and you have done well and that you have not accepted it, but watch what he says. But I fear that you may tolerate it or put up with it. Now, how, how would they go from not accepting it to tolerating it? Again, context is everything. When the gospel message is no longer enough. Okay, can I make this even more uh relevant to you guys because i i I just got to just kick back in my spirit that people are still struggling with what i'm trying to say listen when we all first got saved come on i'm talking about really genuinely touched by god born again and experienced an encounter with his presence his glory there was a transformation i'm talking about the power of the holy spirit and you knew when that service was said and done that you were a new creation in christ jesus and the old had passed away and all things had become new you knew that you had encountered a living god you remember what it felt like you remember the experience Listen, I can, this is why I tell everybody, I can tell you the date, I can tell you the time, I can tell you what, who I was with, I can tell you what the message was, I can tell you that whole details of that night, I can tell you all the details. Why? Because I was radically transformed by the true anointing and power of God. I don't understand people that say, I can't remember when I got saved. I can't remember when I got encountered with the Holy Ghost. I can't remember when I got born again. I can't remember it. You think Saul of Tarsus couldn't remember how he had had an encounter on the road to Damascus when the Lord Jesus showed up and the power of God knocked him off of his horse and he was blind for three days and three nights? You better believe he remembered it because everywhere he went, he testified, come on, somebody, of what God had done in his life. But watch this. We all remember. What's the point? Here's the point. We can mark that day and we can remember and testify to our family, to our children, our coworkers, our family, whoever. We can share our testimonies of how God touched us. But if we ever get to a point when the cross is not enough, the blood is not enough, the message of the gospel is not enough, the simplicity of the gospel is not enough, and we begin to seek another Jesus that is conformed to what we want and how we want him to look and how our lifestyle, we want a Jesus that... revolves around our lifestyle that's convenient for us. We don't want to deny ourselves. We don't want to take up our cross. And we just want, we don't really even want to follow Jesus. We kind of just want him there at our own uh, convenience. If we ever get to that point, we 
are susceptible to deception and falsehood. Watch this. And we will begin to tolerate nonsense in the body of Christ. We'll begin to tolerate false doctrine. We'll begin to follow. We'll begin to tolerate deception. We posted an article today about a a particular denomination of a church who behind the pulpit, the, the pastor of the church dressed like a woman and did a story hour to the children. So now it's gone from libraries into the very churches that we're in. And somebody says, how in the world could the church tolerate such stuff? How are they not rebuking it? How are they not leaving? How are they not running out of the church? I'm going to give you the answer to that, friend. Paul said in the, he said, there would come a time and in the last days that men and women would no longer tolerate or endure sound doctrine. But having itching ears, they will gather to themselves teachers and preachers and apostles and prophets. Come on. That will teach them what they want to hear. And they will turn their ears away from sound doctrine. So watch this. What you're seeing behind pulpits with this nonsense is simply a byproduct of supply and demand. Y'all have heard me preach that message. I preached that message two years ago called the supply and demand of the gospel. Notice all through that scripture, I just quoted you. They, they have itching ears. They surround themselves. They turn their ears away from. The people want it so. So what they're getting behind pulpits is exactly what they want. Well, how can you make such an assertion? How, listen, when that nonsense is going, if I was in, I'm going to tell you right now, if I was in the church service and my pastor, which will never happen, thank God, but if he ever got up and did that kind of nonsense, I would run out the back door. You think I'm going to sit there with my family? And, and tolerate and put up with that, not going to happen. Oh, listen, I know y'all, some of y'all are saying, well, I came here to listen to the pyramid scheme on false apostles. Well, we're getting there. But all this is going to make sense when we get to this last part of this. Now, listen to what he says. For I fear that you'll put up with it, for I consider that I am not as, at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. Now he begins to, again, identify himself as an apostle. Even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. Listen to this. Oh, come on. This is good right here. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. Now, who's we? The apostles. The early apostles in the word of God. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. Listen to the heart of Paul, who was an apostle. And when I was present with you and in need, I was a burden to no one for what I lacked the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. Oh, come on. In other words, the church supplied Paul's needs. There's nothing wrong with giving and receiving, but there's a, a deceptive side to that, and we'll talk about that in a second. And in everything, I kept myself from being a burdensome to you, so I will keep myself as the truth of Christ is in me. No one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of, Ach of, of Achaia. Why? Listen to this. Because I do not love you and God knows. He was being honest here. But what I do, I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be uh, apostles. Whoa. Now watch this. Hold on. Let me read this again. But what I do, I will also continue to do. This is 2 Corinthians 11 verse... 
Uh, it's down at the latter part of this. I believe it's around 12 or 13. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows what I do. I'll, I will also continue to do that. Do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. Listen, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to the works. Again, at 2 Corinthians 11, 1 through 15. Now watch this. Paul tells us that Satan in his day had infiltrated the church with false apostles, deceitful workers. And number two, they were in his day, but guys, they will progressively wax worse in our day. How, do, how can we say that? Because the scriptures talk about this, the, the falling away, the uh, they will have a form of godliness. They will deny the power there. First Timothy uh, four one talks about there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. There'll be demons preaching behind pulpits, and the people will be shouting them down, amen in them, and accepting it and putting up with it. Now I got to read another verse of scripture. First Corinthians chapter four verses nine through twenty one. I want to give you the definition. I, or not really a definition, but I want to give you the attributes of a true biblical apostle. Ready? For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death. Notice, no, well, listen to all this. They were condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We, now who's we? The apostles. We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we are dishonored. To this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. We are poorly clothed. We are beaten and we are homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, we're being persecuted, we endure, we're being defamed, we entreat, we have been made as the filth of the world. The offscoring of all things until now. I do not, I do not write these things to shame you. But as my beloved children, I warn you, for though you may have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. He's saying, imitate me as an apostle. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you want? Quote. A question mark. Shall I come to you with a rod? That's he's talking about correction or in love and a spirit of gentleness. That's first Corinthians four, nine and 21. Now I want you to uh, put a tent peg right there or a bookmark on first Corinthians four, nine and 21. And remember everything I just read to you from Paul's letter to second Corinthians about the deceitfulness of Satan, false apostles working in the, in the church, and all the deception, putting up with another spirit, another Jesus, another doctrine. Keep all that in your mind. Keep what I just read to you in 1 Corinthians 4, 9 to, through 21. The, the, the attributes and characteristics of true apostles and biblical times. Keep all that in, in the back of your mind. Now, I want to give you... Ba Based out of Second Corinthians, out of Second Corinthians, 
I want to give you 16 marks of a false minister. Don't worry. I'm not going to read all these scriptures. I'm going to give you the references to them, but I'm going to highlight them. Ready? Come on. If you're taking notes, this is good. Number one, false apostles hold secret things of shame. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 2. What does this mean? Their li- Listen to this. Their lives demonstrate a falsehood that is not demonstrated in their private lives. In other words, in the public spectacle, in the public eye, they live one life and they're one way, but in private, it's another way. Number two, they walk in craftiness. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. In other words, they walk in deception. They're deceived and deceiving. Number three, they handle the word deceitfully. 2 Corinthians 4, 2. In other words, they use the word for deceitful practices. Number, what is this? Number four, they walk in war after the flesh. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 3. Listen to this. Many of these modern apostles, don't get me started, and we'll, we're going to elaborate all on this in just a second. Many of these modern apostles are actively, unashamedly living in adultery, fornication, drunkenness, lewdness, and the list goes on. Here's the next one. They look on outward appearance, 2 Corinthians 10, 7. They are always trying to rub elbows with individuals in high positions who have much wealth, prestige, recognition, and fame for all for personal gain and recognition themselves. In other words, if I can rub elbows with so-and-so, I can get to where they're at. Again, the pyramid scheme, always trying to get to the top, always trying to be better, always trying to be better, always trying to be more uh, uh, glamorous and more powerful and more whatever. 2 Corinthians 10, 12, this is the next one. They commend themselves. They're always self-promoting on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, flyers, banners. Listen, these quote-unquote apostles, you'll never see them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, whatever, any banners, conference promotions, any of these things goes out, you will always see their face. It may listen, I can name names, but I'm not going to, and it makes me cringe. There's ministries out there that every time they make a tweet, they give an update, they do a YouTube video, the all the thumbnails or the pictures or the photos, it's always got to have their picture. It's like this guy's face is on everything, or this woman's face is on every single thing. That makes me cringe, honestly. Here's the next one. They compare themselves to others at 2 Corinthians 10, 12. They're always, listen to this, they were always, they will use social media and cut the other guy down to make themselves look better it's the whole process of blow out your candle that my candle may shine brighter. Here's another one. They pray on the works of others. Second Corinthians 10, 15 and 16 today. Listen to me. It is very common to see sermons, quotes, and memes all over the internet and social media that are simply repackaged and redistributed by so-called apostles and prophets without ever giving proper credit to the original authors for the sake of self-promotion and exaltation in the eyes of men. Guys, I see this constantly, and I just laugh. They'll quote, they'll get, because listen, I got books up here by reformers. Finney, Spurgeon, Wesley, uh, all these guys. So I know uh, many of their quotes. And, and, And you'll see these guys quoting from them without giving them the recognition and taking the recognition for their quotes. 
Why? Because people gather on. Oh, did you hear what apostle so-and-so said? Look at this words of wisdom. So again, here's, let me give you the other ones real quick. They are greedy of income. Hello, the pyramid scheme. And I'm going to talk about that in a second is all about the money. Whoever's at the top is benefiting. They are, their pockets are being lined. Second Corinthians, all in the name of apostleship. Second Corinthians 11, 7 through 12. They are false and they seek the highest places of position. Second Corinthians 11, 13. Uh, they try to counterfeit apostleship. Second Corinthians 11, 13. They pose as righteous ministers. Second Corinthians 11, 15. They seek occasion to glory. 2 Corinthians 11, 12, they are boastful and self-exalting. 2 Corinthians 11, 18, and they are destitute of apost apostolistic uh, signs. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Now, let me say this, and then I'm going to interject some of my own personal experience, and we're going to blow the, the lid off this thing. Ready? According to the Bible, there were three major requirements to be an apostle in the early church. Let me say that again. There were three major requirements of being an actual apostle according to the Bible. Ready? Number one, the candidate was required to be someone who followed Jesus during his entire earthly ministry, beginning from Jesus' baptism by John to Jesus' ascension into heaven. Number two, that the candidate was required to have seen Jesus after his resurrection. That's, that's what would qualify the Apostle Paul or Saul of Tarsus. Number three, the candidate needed to have been appointed by the Lord Jesus himself. Now, keep this in mind, but now we fast forward to 20. Really not even what today's right now we're in 2022, but guys, this has been going on for at least 10 years. At least 10 years. And according to the today's standards and qualifications for being apostle ready, number one, again, this is today to be an apostle today. Number one, all you need to do. You only need two major requirements for today. Ready? Number one is have a social media account. You could have Twitter. You can have Facebook. You can have Instagram. You can have TikTok. You can have YouTube. You can have any of these social media accounts. Ready? Number two is, and here's the big one. You've got to be connected, or here's a big word, aligned with an with a quote here it is an apostolic network which will include here it is ironically it will include annual fees and requirements to achieve the apostleship status let me say that again today all you need is a social media account what am I talking about? <laughs> Listen, guys, I remember, you remember when, uh, what was it called? TikTok had what was called Periscope. Anybody remember that? And we tried it out for a while and it was terrible. I did. I never liked Periscope. Just like I don't like TikTok and we're not on. We tried TikTok and we ditched that real quick. Just, it's not, it just didn't work out for us. Periscope. Is basically Twitter's Facebook Live, or was they don't even they don't they shut it down. They don't even exist anymore. But I remember when you uh, we would get on Periscope, and I'm telling you, I, if you couldn't find the prophets, the modern prophets of today, or you couldn't find the modern apostles, I found all of them. They were on Periscope. They were on Facebook. They're on YouTube. That's where all the prophets are today. Because anybody and everybody was an apostle or a prophet, and they've got a social media account, and they call themselves apostles so-and-so, prophet so-and-so. Oh, listen, if you're going to get mad and get uh, 
your 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 uh, feathers ruffled, then you definitely don't want to stick around for the rest of this podcast because I'm really going to stir some stir the pot up. Because listen, we're going to set some people free from this junk. But then, but then it went a step further. And individuals began to create these modern, what they call them, apostolic networks. Now, they may not come out and tell you that, and, you know, that it's an apostolic network, but that's exactly what it is. And they will brand it. Hello. They will title it. They will commercialize it. They will promote it. And you can get in on this network. Come on, the bottom of the pyramid. You come in on the bottom. Regardless of your background, regardless of your character, regardless of your faith, regardless of your spirit, regardless of your faithfulness, just come on in. You can be a part of our network, but there is, when you come on, there's an annual fee. You pay such and such, you pay a certain amount of money to be a part of this network. And that gets you in the entry level. Now, when you're at the bottom of this, now listen, I'm going to tell you, let me pause it there. And let me tell you how I know this. Because many, many, many years ago, there was some things that happened. There was some wounds that I myself uh, and my family encountered, and we were vulnerable. And somehow we got connected with certain individuals, and they sucked us into one of these, quote, apostolic networks, and I thought it was good. Oh, this is, you know, this is a good connection of, of people. This could be great, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But then as I began to do some more research and I began to dig and I began uh, to do my own homework, I discovered that these the, the qualifications to get into this network was you just simply pay the fee. If you pay the fee, you're in our network. And you pay the fee, you get an entry level, watch this. And even in the, uh, in the writings of the handbook of this network, it even stated that sir, if you paid a certain level, in other words, I'm just going to throw this out there. Let's say you pay $100 a year for the entry level of this apostolic network. Those are air quotations. You get in the entry level. You get in the bottom level. But if you start sowing more, you start paying $200 or $300 or $400, then you move up in your levels, watch this, of your relationship with the apostle. Yes, the apostle or apostles, plural tense, are at the top of the pyramid and they are the overseers. They call the shots. They are the ones who uh, dictate things. So, this is in the language of this. You can become a son or a daughter based on your level of money that you give. In other words, you just pay the entry fee to get in. You're at the bottom. You pay more, you give more, you contribute more Then your level of interaction. You, you're going to move up to a status of getting emails. Pay a little bit more, you'll get text messages. You pay, you get up here into the gold status of the pyramid, up closer up to the top. You may even get to rub elbows with the apostle or apostles. You may, and when you and and when they have their when they have their uh, gatherings, gatherings and their conferences, you may even be able to be called out on the platform and prayed over and prophesied over. Guys, I was firsthand experience in this. I remember I went to one of these quote unquote conferences and there was about 200 people there. 
And I remember one of these individuals got up at this conference and said, if you feel like you're called to be a prophet, I want you to stand to your feet. Everybody in the building stood on their feet and I was cringing. Because I knew there ain't no way all these people are prophets, but they've been convinced from the top that they were prophets. Because see, the ultimate, listen, here's the ultimate end game for these apostles is if they can get you hook, line, and sinkered and get your and get the money pumping in, then eventually you will reach the status of they will put you, they will, they will bring you to a conference and they will pray over you. And they, here it is. They will declare that you are now an apostle. They will commission you quotes, air quotations, commission you. They will send you out as an apostle in your region and in your state and in your church. Why? Why would they want to do that? So then you can go and plant your church as the apostle under their umbrella, under their leadership. And you say, oh, wait a minute, who's, where's the pastors in this? Where's the local churches? Oh, there ain't none. Because they don't see any value in local churches. In fact, many of them have books and they undermine the shepherds, they undermine local churches, they undermine pastors, and they completely remove them from the equation because it's all about the apostles and the prophets. Oh, listen, how deep you want me to go with this? I've never seen a pastor's conference. I've never seen a teacher's conference. But all the time, I see a promotion of apostolic conferences or the uh, the gathering of the apostles or the prophetic or the prophets the prophets are gathering from all over the regions and they're going to give a word for the nations and it's the same regurgitated word over and over and over and over and over they're going to give you keys to the city. They're going to declare to you that Jezebel's been dethroned. They're going to tell you that darkness will no longer prevail. They're going to tell you that prosperity is coming. And it's always good, 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 good. And nothing ever prevails. I told you, we're not going to name names. But I'm giving you the characteristic because I want you to know this. I want you to recognize this. We're exposing this. We're blowing the lid off of this thing because I don't want you falling victim to this garbage. And people are, listen, thank God people that I know personally has run from this stuff because they saw the same thing. I, listen, I got phone calls from pastors who were weeping and were crying, who got pulled into this mess. And when their churches were falling apart and in shambles, and they were trying to reach out to their quote unquote apostle, he was nowhere to be found. But the only time they heard from him was when it was time for that local pastor and his church to give their cut to that apostle. So in other words, when it was long as it was uh, when it was time to receive, you would hear from the apostle. But when it was, but when we when he when you needed the apostle to come and help out your church and your circumstances, nowhere to be found. It's it's unbelievable, guys. And again, we've got a lot of people on social media, Facebook, all over the place, apostle so-and-so, or prophet so-and-so. And they've never been commissioned. They've never been called. They've never been sent, truly. Their statuses, their titles, their positions, and all that came from this nonsense. And I listen, I could have pulled guests on here today, multiple guests, and we could have spent two hours and I could have let them share their own circumstances and their own uh, 
experiences with this very thing I'm telling you about today. So what am I talking about today? I'm trying to tell you that the apostle Paul warned that in the time of the end, there would be false apostles that would rise up and they would infiltrate the church. And I gave you all these characteristics. There's a reason why I gave you those 16 characteristics. There's a reason why I read to you out of uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 1 Corinthians 4, because I want you to become acquainted with these scriptures and know what you're dealing with today. You're see, we're seeing this all over the place. I thought this thing would die out, but it's not. It's still going strong. And listen, and some of these have become, listen, they, un, they, they recognize that people are catching on to it. So they have rebranded themselves. Oh, how far do you want me to go? It, just like a lot of the so-called prophets that prophesied that Trump was going to win the second term. And we're not talking about down the road in 2024. I'm talking, let's just make this clear and let's make it right now. I'm tired of people making it skip. Well, maybe they were talking about 2024, 2028. No, they were specific and they were talking about a two term. And we're talking about the last election cycle. Let's just flat out call it like it is. Stop making excuses for these false prophets that had no unashamedly got up on Christian television networks and all over the place and said over and over again, the Lord showed me and the Lord told me and it did not happen. And there was very, very few of them that actually repented and said and confessed that they missed it. One of them completely walked away from quote unquote prophetic ministry, rebranded his whole ministry. And probably, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but we'll just have to wait and see. But again, sadly, people are being gullible and they're getting sucked into this over and over and over again. It makes me sick when, uh, when they're on Christian television networks and they've openly missed prophecy after prophecy after prophecy after pro they gave this prophetic word and it didn't happen they gave that prophetic word and it didn't happen and yet people are still flocking why because they want their ears tickled they, it's just like in jeremiah's day prophesy to us smooth things make us feel good preach to us and say peace to us when there is no peace now, listen, if I didn't make you mad at the beginning of that, I'm guarantee you I'll get a lot of response on that. Because I'm telling you, there is so many justifications going on for that and excuses, and they will continually be sucked into this. And the next and listen, uh, trust me, mark my words. Listen to me. You want to listen. This ain't even a prophecy. I'm not giving you a prophetic word here. I'm just going to tell you like I see it because I see it every single cycle. Here's what happens. I'm going to close with this because I'm just ranting at this point. As you can tell, I'm a little flustered and stirred up about this. Let me give you this and watch Mark and just mark this down, write it down and see if it don't happen because it happens every election cycle. Every election cycle. Watch this. Ready? All the alleged prophets that got it wrong last time have gone. Many of them have gone into hiding. They've become quiet. They've swept it under the rug or they've moved on to the next thing, hoping everybody else has forgotten that they've missed the last 10 prophecies they've given over the last 10 years. How do they keep getting away with this? Because they prophesy something. And I see it over and over again. They'll make a prophecy. They'll give a prophetic word. And then when it don't come to pass, they suddenly become quiet. They suddenly become AWOL. They suddenly become missing off social media for about a month or two until everything blows over. And then something new comes on the horizon. Listen, one so-called prophet, when COVID first hit, one so-called prophet got up and said the Lord told him that this was something that was going to be simple and it was going to be quick and it was going to blow over and go away. 
And this guy's on TBN. He's all over the place. And here we are three years later, and it ain't went away, but nobody wants to call him out, right? But we're just going to sweep it under the rug because we're going to move on to the next thing. Watch. So mark my words. They've gone quiet. They've gone dormant. So when we get about to the midterms, 20, right about the end, right about November, 2023, get ready for it. 2023, right into the end, going into 2024. Here they come. Boop, they pop their heads out like the groundhog during Groundhog Day to see their shadow. They, they'll start popping out, and they'll start popping off these so-called prophetic words again. Well, the Lord show me, and it'll be regards to the, the next election cycle. Here's the sad part. Ready? How many people will fall for that again and again and again? And again, so you're going to see Facebook, you're going to see Twitter, you're going to see uh, YouTube, you're going to see Rumble, you're going to see all these social media outlets bombarded with so-called prophetic words regarding whoever the candidate is or candidates. And they'll say, the Lord showed me this and the Lord showed me that. And we're going to go through this again and again and again. Now, let me clarify this. Am I saying that God cannot give a man or woman of God a prophetic word? No, I'm not saying that. Again, I'm not against the gifts. What I am saying is, you. this is what I was taught from my mentors and the people of God and, and the men of God I sat under. You better know that you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that God spoke to you before you ever go public and speak it. I, and, and I can honestly say that I can say that with the birth of my first child, I can say that how this ministry was birthed. I can say a, a lot of circumstances when I had dreams and I had words from the Lord and they came to pass, but you will not see me get up and speak presumptuously because I had some goosebumply feeling and just spat out of the mouth and say, Oh, whatever. If it's hit and miss roll the dice. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't spin a wheel. I may get it. I may not No. That's not how prophecy is. And, I, and, and it's, it, it's unbelievable. So what am I, again, I want to close with this today and tell you that there is false apostles that are continually taking captive, and I will throw this in there, false prophets. Jesus said in Matthew 24, and there will be false prophets that will arise and deceive many. And we're seeing this, and it's only going to wax worse and worse. And the problem, and listen, guys, I hate to tell you this, but the repercussions of this mess on the body of Christ is damaging. Do you know how many people won't even listen to any prophetic word anymore? You know how many people, Christians, so-called Christians, don't even believe in the gifts anymore? They undermine real, true biblical prophecy. They don't, they don't want to hear any quote unquote prophetic word anymore. Why? Because of this mess. Because this has become the, the prophetic uh, message, the true prophetic vein of the body of Christ has become so polluted that people are becoming dull eared. They don't want to hear it anymore. And we're losing people and we're losing the all of God, the supernatural of God, because of this very thing right here. So listen, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. That's going to be our main website, guys, where you can follow us. Again, download the app. It's free. It's available on Apple. It's available on Android. Hit yes to push notifications. Get notified of every one of our headlines, our podcast, our prophetic uh, viewpoints, whatever the case may be. They're all there for your convenience. Uh, you can get those right there again by downloading our free app. And as always, guys, one thing that it can never be accused of our ministry is we, everything we do is free. We don't charge you. We don't charge you extra. We don't charge you anything. We don't charge you for the app. We don't charge you for the subscription base. We don't charge you for any of the messages. We don't charge you for anything. Access to our website, Everything is absolutely free. All we do is ask, and if, as you've been blessed, we ask that you would prayerfully 
consider partner with our partnering with our ministry so we can continue to do what we're doing. We don't put a burden on anybody. We just ask that you be led by the Holy Spirit. Listen, we don't show favoritism towards anybody. We don't we really we don't even name names. When you give, you give in secret and your heavenly Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. We don't name names and we don't put you on the website and say, you know, so and so gave x amount of dollar. We don't, I don't believe in all that mess. I believe that if you truly give with a willful and giving heart, then God loves a cheerful giver. He's going to bless you in return. And you could do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app, through the main website, or you can give by check or money order. And that is made out to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. Again, guys. Uh, if you've been, if this message was interesting to you or it was a blessing to you, don't forget to share this message uh, with others that may uh, find interest in it. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, on Rumble, uh, on, on all these other social media networks. Guys, we're on Getter, G-E-T-T-R. I just read recently that that network's growing. A lot of people, uh, there's a mass exodus going out of Twitter and going into that network. Joe Rogan's there now. I believe... Uh, Tucker Carlson went there recently. So there's a lot of people just leaving Twitter because they're on the rampage of censoring conservatives and, and anyone who speaks anything contrary to the narrative, they are just removing them and censoring them from their platform. So we're over there. We're at G-E-T-T-R, Getter. We're on Parler. We're on uh, MeWe. We're on Gab. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble we're we're all over the place so there's no you can follow us somewhere guys there's no excuse to not be able to uh to keep into the knowing of what we're doing uh on a daily basis with our headlines with our podcasts and so on and so forth so again we love you guys and we appreciate you taking time out today uh to hear uh, what i had to say my heart and sharing with you i hope this makes sense. I believe, I believe it's going to resound uh, or it's going to resonate to a lot of people that are maybe watching or listening to this. And maybe you fell captive to this. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to sign off for today. We're going to take off tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, the middle of the week. We'll be back on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we've got some stories lined up that I want to talk about, uh, some situations that are coming about uh, that I think are a point of interest in discussion. So be looking for that. Until then, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you on Thursday. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.